Now, I don't normally give sub £100 handsets uh, much airtime on the phone show. They involve too many compromises and anyone keen enough on tech to watch this show will find them too limiting. But I'm going to make an exception for this, the Smart Prime 6, the little sister to the Star Budget flagship, the Smart Ultra 6 here on your right, which I reviewed in Phone Show 256. The Smart Prime 6 is £80 and a 5-inch 720p screen with a Snapdragon 410 chipset and a gig of RAM. So quite a step down from the Smart Ultra 6 and, and crucially so. They're definitely still in my first smartphone territory. Think Lumia 640, think Moto G and so on. And even equipping each of these with a 32 gigabyte micro SD say, you can still get six of these for the cost of one similarly sized iPhone of reasonable spec and still have enough left for a nice night down the pub. The components used aren't bad either. The camera is 8 megapixel with 1080p video capture. Again, surprising at this price, though don't expect too much in terms of quality. The speakers average, here's a demo, full volume. Yeah, I'm rather spoiled after the Marshall London and the last phone show. Everything is going to sound weedy from now on, unfortunately. The back does pop off, faux metal plastic, pops off for card insertion, though you can't change the battery. Though at 2500 milliamp hours, and with this specification, we're looking at a genuine two-day battery life in typical user hands. I did like the neon glowing capacitive controls at the bottom, just as on the Smart Ultra 6. They're an endearing feature. They do mean more screen real estate for use. The Smart Prime 6's screen isn't quite as contrasty as that in the SU6, but it's not far off and better than we're used to expecting at this price point. As with the SU6, the Smart Prime is essentially stock Android with just some Vodafone apps that can all be uninstalled. Hooray! In the background marketing bump, the Vodafone team spoke about trying to create something in the Nexus 5 mold but at a far lower price. And in some ways it succeeded in terms of feel, interface and so on. Android 5 Lollipop adds a sheen of 2015 modernity that belies the low specification. Plus you get LTE, NFC, double tap to wake, a notification like all, not always given at this price point. Something has to give, of course. And in this case, it's the single gigabyte of RAM that means applications do get dumped from memory sometimes, more than on the Smart Ultra 6. And the lag while they load up again does become an issue if you're a smartphone connoisseur. However, anyone buying at this price, £80, will be expecting a lot less, in which case the Smart Prime 6 may fit a lot of bills without costing the earth. Oh, and by the way, as with the Smart Ultra 6, this can be easily network unlocked at nominal cost, though obviously Vodafone will be hoping that most buyers stick with them. Heck, most normal mobs don't even realise you can take SIM cards out of phones. Go figure. Another top five, another bunch of caveats and controversy. Not least that I've actually never held two of the choices and I've only had two others for a day. <clears throat> But hear me out, there's method in my madness. Um, as usual, all the smartphones in my own daily rotation are nowhere to be seen. Don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm still using this battered Nexus 5. It still runs like lightning and does just about everything I need. Plus gems like my Lumia 1020, still with unique selling points in 2015, believe it or not. And my beloved Galaxy S4 was snagged by my sister and she's utterly delighted with it. And I'd love to pick the new Lumia 950, but that's not even being announced until the end of next month. The new Nexus 5X won't be launched for another two weeks, so they're out too. Oh, and I'm boycotting Samsung at the moment generally. Their hardware design choices in 2015 and the continuance with TouchWiz, well, they're just annoying me. Sorry. The Smart Ultra 6 from Vodafone should really be in the top five too. You saw that earlier in the show, except that it's UK only and the phone show is international. Still amazing value at £125 here though, and it's had several updates recently to improve it further. So on with the top five. Traditionally, the last spot is for something quirky, and it has to be the Marshall London, which I reviewed in the previous phone show. A genuine unique selling point in the audio output across the board, even if the internals could be beefed up and the price brought down a little. I still want one though. 
At number four, the Honor 7, which I've only had a day with so far, but which at £250 in the UK just can't be ignored for a premium metal flagship. Get past the use of Emotion UI or put your own launcher on and it's a massive amount of smartphone for not much money. At number three and not even available in the shops yet, so sorry about that, the Xperia Z5 Compact. All the larger Z5 standard, but I think the Compact will be the coolest. A Nokia pure view light camera, 2015 sensor optics and algorithms, a sensible size to be carried all day every day, everywhere, plus Sony's latest durability boasts and a user interface which doesn't add much on top of stock Android. Building the tension, the number one from the last top five, the LG G4, is still a great 2015 smartphone with the best camera in the industry for most light conditions. Plus it's almost unique these days in having replaceable battery and micro SD support. Get the leather back you want online, slip in a Qi coil for wireless charging and you are set. And it's almost £200 cheaper now than when it's launched, down in the £350 region. Potentially the best smartphone at a relative bargain price. But at number one, I've been genuinely impressed by our family iPhone 6, which is an absolutely perfect size and just gets on with any app, any task, any function for normal smartphone users who wouldn't know their RAM from their micro SD formatting scheme. And now we have an iPhone 6S, faster, stronger and better in terms of components. It still costs the earth, well over £600 in the UK for the sensible base spec of 64 gigabyte. But if you can afford it, and if you're not a geek, then you can't go far wrong with this, the iPhone 6S. Yes, yes, that was slightly outrageous to have just picked a smartphone that was only announced yesterday. But there's always the existing iPhone 6, which is now £80 cheaper. And more importantly, the dimensions are very similar, meaning that almost all iPhone 6 accessories will happily fit the 6S. If you do go for the iPhone 6S, then note that my usual go-to case suppliers and sponsors, Pro Porto, have a couple of interesting options. There's this, and I quote the 360 degree armor with tempered glass screen protector, affectionately known as the front and back case, here modeled on an iPhone 6S dummy. Uh, this adds aluminium all round and extra tempered glass on the front, unbelievable impact protection for the phone underneath and looks cool. Though do note that the front section is relatively lightly stuck on and the sharp edges can quite easily catch things. However, 25 pound, it is genuine aluminium. So more practical day to day, in my opinion, is this the dual shield with Pro Porter describing it as military grade protection. I'm not sure about military, but it's quite superbly protective anyway. An Otterbox like dual layer design means that a soft rubber sheath goes over the phone and then a harder but still rubberized outer shell clamps over the combination. It works brilliantly and the coatings are apparently antimicrobial as well and kill germs. <laughs> Great value at under £20 I think plus you can get money off anything at Pro Porter with any of its promo codes. Try some of these listed below.